Why don't you leave us alone? Government's in our way. Let the free market work. Politicians claim they must manage everything. Student loans, street vendors, iPhone apps. Okay, here you go. Why is my doctor's iPhone your business? And the politicians want us to pay for everything, including wine tasting centers, Harry Reid monuments. How much better would America be if government just got out of the way? Get out of my life. Big government rejected. That's our show tonight. And now, John Stossel. You've heard about our $14 trillion plus national debt and how it's getting worse, but it's hard to get your brain around numbers that big. So here's another way to think about the debt and the spending that makes it worse. This year, our government will spend twice what it takes in. Twice. That's only going to increase the debt. This is just unsustainable. Progressives say a solution is taxing the rich, but even if you took every penny of income from millionaires and billionaires, even that wouldn't cover the deficit. Our only hope is to cut spending. And that's a good thing to do because government does all kinds of things it shouldn't do. But few politicians will propose cuts. Cuts, after all, are not politically popular. But one who is trying is Congressman Mike Pompeo. Among other things, he wants to eliminate part of the Commerce Department that's called the Economic Development Administration. So why? What do they do? Well. The Economic Development Administration takes about three or four hundred million dollars a year from you, the taxpayer, and brings that money to Washington, D.C., and distributes it uh, politically across... Economic development. Uh, they distribute across a couple of hundred congressional districts. They are a political animal. Uh, we have to point to uh, places to begin. Uh, we haven't eliminated an agency with an administrator this high in 50 years in America. And so I'm trying to get rid of this one, this one agency... Uh, that does uh, these quintessentially local tasks uh, with federal dollars. The federal government's got no business doing it. We're well, what do you mean? This sounds it. good. They're going to build infrastructure for a steel plant in Minnesota, improve electricity in Vermont. You know, the Minnesota example is the perfect case. Uh, a $2 million Economic Development Administration grant in a couple billion dollar project. <laughs> that project was going forward without federal taxpayer money. Uh, this is a project that made sense economically. And there was no reason to fleece the taxpayer for a couple million bucks to build that steel plant for that private company. And some of what they do does seem just pointless. The Harry Reid Research and Technology Park in Las Vegas, a million to promote tourism in the northern Mariana Islands. Some people would say, yeah, no, you're not saving enough money to make any difference. We're, we're billions in debt. Uh, well, they're, they're, their point is well taken. There's a lot more work to do, but we've got to start someplace. We've got to identify real agencies, get rid of them, not just trim them back, not just slow their growth, but actually make them go away. That's why you pick this one. Let's just it, totally get rid of this in the Commerce Department. Exactly right. It does nothing the federal government ought to be doing. Five other cabinet departments have economic development agencies within them. It's everywhere. Uh, these programs are duplicative. Uh, we'll... Uh, we'll work on this, and then we'll go attack some of the other ones as well. This is the administration massaging different congressmen to spread the loot around? or yeah, What's going on? I, I think that's it. You don't even have to be sinister to know that these political agencies uh, perpetuate themselves. And so they put these projects in my district in Kansas and in districts all across the country uh, so that when the congressman shows up to say, hey, I think this ought to go away, they point to them and say, well, let me tell you what it's done in your district. Uh, they forget to tell you about all the things that could have been done with that taxpayer money when Kansas paid for projects in Nevada and West Virginia and Nebraska. And when they come to you and say, look what Kansas got, it's pretty hard for a congressman to say, oh, I don't want that money. You have to have a vision for what the federal government is supposed to do. And have what you it's said, I don't want that do. money? We uh, get rid of all of it, including I, mine. I have actually absolutely said this agency ought to go away, even those monies coming to the state of Kansas. Two million for a culinary amphitheater and a wine tasting room in Richland, Washington. So what are they thinking? Some econo economic development agency at some local place applied for a grant from the Economic Development Administration. They qualified and they received federal dollars. There was no one thinking about whether that made sense or whether we'd get a chance to look at that today and say, tisk tisk. Uh, and no sense that we're in a crisis, that we're going bankrupt, <clears throat> we have to stop this? 
14 trillion dollars and counting. You pointed out that these are sometimes uh, folks in their home that say, hey, we want to cut government, but not here and, and not today. Um, but it's today and it's everywhere that we've got to shrink the federal government. All right. Well, another way you want to shrink it is you want to get rid of all energy subsidies. And the <clears throat> wind lobby attacked you for that. You misunderstand how a key federal tax incentive has built a thriving American wind manufacturing sector. Lots of jobs. They would even point out that they have one in my home state of Kansas. They forget to tell you that if that money were left in the pockets of taxpayers, that those jobs that they cost by taxing people, taking that wealth out of the private sector, uh, cost far more jobs than the wind sector could ever possibly hope to create. Well, progressives generally think that energy subsidies for clean energy, that's a place where the spending should happen. And progressive Erica Payne says, we need this kind of subsidy for things like solar and wind power. Make your case. Well, first of all, I want to applaud you for coming out and challenging the dominance that the oil and gas company has. So I do agree with that part of, of what you're talking about. But just about. to clarify, and, he um, wants to cut all subsidies, right. including those for oil and gas. Right. Um, I think the question, though, is, I mean, all we're really trying to get at is better products and better prices for consumers, right? I mean, that's really ultimately what this is about. So how do you bring competition into the marketplace? And, well, competition and, is in the marketplace. It doesn't well, have I mean, to be brought in. Well, I mean, I think that this is one of, one of the challenges that we face in, in navigating these, especially energy, because what happens now is you're kind of, it's like you're asking a, a fifth grader to compete on even playing field with a college student. Right. Solar and wind. Well, I children have, who need help. I'm using that as an example because right now if I want to refill my car, there are plenty of corners even in New York City where I can go and fill my gas tank up. Alternatively, though, um, pardon the, the pun, I'm not able to go somewhere and fill up my electric car. So I would just argue right. that we need a bridge from here to there. Right. The, the argument, What's wrong with a bridge? Yeah, the argument you make, Eric, uh, uh, sounds appealing on its face, but we're now 30 years into the bridges. We've been subsidizing wind for decades. We've been subsidizing hydroelectric for decades. Uh, we, <laughs> this, is, this is not a bridge. This is a 10,000-mile highway, and it's time to just say, stand on your own two feet, compete. These are big companies. Well, so res respectfully, though, um, you know, as we've been subsidizing, as you said, some of these alternate energy sources, we've still been subsidizing oil. And so well, what we've second. done let's is said, let's, those subsidies. let's... The subsidies for oil and natural gas and coal are trivial compared to wind and solar. Well, I think it, it, it sort of comes down to what your definition of is is, okay? I mean, not to, <laughs> does? not to be silly. It does because look at the wars that we've been fighting. That's a trillion dollars of a subsidy. And I mean, I don't think anybody really thinks that we, that we went into those wars for any reason other than energy. So, we so, so in subsidies, Iraq subsidies. For oil. Uh, Subs I mean, so, which subsidies are subsidies? I, 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 need, I need to take that on. That's a, I, I've heard that claim before. It's ridiculous on its face. The best way to get to where you say you want to be, which is that we have low cost, efficient energy produced here in America, is to get the government out of the game of trying to figure out All which right, technology to But now you're not choose. responding to her claim that we no. went into Iraq to get oil. That we, was our justification. We went in for American national security. I'm a former soldier. I'm a veteran. Okay. I understand national security interests in a deep way. What we want to make sure is this. We have $15 trillion in debt. Admiral Mullen said the most dangerous risk facing our national security is America's debt. The very last thing we want to do is waste hundreds of billions of dollars on energy subsidies that will go to no good. We've seen what's happened with Solyndra. We saw what happened today with another company that we're seeing. The next federal one dollars. might be the good one. The, you well, know, I, eventually they'll get a good one, John. If everyone gets lucky every now and again. They'll eventually pick a winner. But we will have wasted and squandered the ability of the competitive marketplace to solve the very problem that you want solved. Your goal is an admirable one, and I do think we all agree that, that what we want, again, is the best prices for American consumers, and we want to have a secure energy source. The question is, how long have we subsidized some of the ones that are harmful us, and to what degree are the prices mm -hmm. built into... Mm -hmm. So when, when you look at air pollution, for example, you know, if you look at rates of children's asthma, if you look at the cost of war, all of these different items are not currently priced oh, into oil Oh, come on. How about the birds prices? killed by the windmills going around and all well, the people I mean, but, killed but making the, but the I mean, windmills? This is, this is a key economic construct. If, if everybody in America knew what an externality 
right. was, then I think we would all be a lot the better off. The politicians can apportion this properly? We, Even with the subs that you propose, you still will have an average family of four paying triple for their electricity if we move forward in the process that you propose. It's not just subsidies. On top of that, in the state of Kansas, we've got renewable mandates. I mean, this is an extraordinary cost that you're placing on the American consumer. If you'll just let energy compete, we'll find the best energy technology. And by let energy compete, you mean greedy private producers <clears throat> are going to try to win the bids? How does it work? Yes, it's absolutely the case. We will find uh, corporations and individuals that will use their own economic self-interest to find that great next energy technology. It has happened for generations. And if they America, screw up? They'll pay the price. They'll file bankruptcy in America. I won't have to pay for it? It won't cost the taxpayer a nickel. On that note, thank you, Erica Payne, Congressman Pompeo. Coming up, government also wants to regulate your iPhone apps, protect you from flower sellers, and protect you from China. And it wants you to pay for his student loan. I say, stop, stop it. Why are you telling us what to do? Occupy Wall Street. Occupy UT. Everybody has a right to a free education, higher education, college education, masters, you name it. In my personal opinion, I would like the, you know, um, that all debt be revoked. Revoke all student debt. That's one demand from those protesters who get so much attention. And President Obama has decided to revoke their debt, or at least to forgive all student debt, after 20 years. It used to be 25 years. He's also taken steps to lower the student's interest rate. Of course, someone else has to pay for that, and as usual, that someone else is you. So I say that's wrong. But Newsday columnist Ellis Hennigan says it's right. Why is it right? Well, because in a way, John, we have reneged on our social compact with these kids. We told them, do whatever you have to do. Get a college education. When you get out of school, you're going to be off and have the opportunity to have a, a solid career that will enable you to get started as, as an adult and indeed to pay off these loans. You know what? I didn't tell them that. Well, but These you know, were politicians and colleges lying to them. Well, they did a lot of it, but you know, our culture in general has sent that message to young people for generations and for those generations it was true but you know what it's not true anymore and some of those kids are saying wait hold on a second if I have this ball and chain of debt around me I'm never gonna be able to get my adulthood started this is a problem and we need to face it why would I loan if I knew that government might come in and say well, we're going to change the rules of this deal. Well, l l listen, clearly individual responsibility is an important value here. And kids, and, I, and I'm not, you'll notice, I'm not coming out for forgive every single nickel of student loans. But I do think that we need to take a, a, a new look at this thing. I propose the opposite of that as a new look. How okay. about saying, you know, we've been loaning all these kids money. Many of them shouldn't even be in college. Because we loan this money, college costs are way up. In fact, we have a graph of that. I mean, because of all these government handouts and, and easy loans, the cost of college has gone up at four times the rate of inflation. We complain about health care costs, that they've gone up twice the rate of inflation. College is up four times. The colleges have become country clubs because of these loans. <laughs> they still make the kids study, I, I hope. But, but listen, John, do we really want the consequences of following your path? What, what if all good colleges become only a place where the super wealthy can send their kids? We'll have, we'll have dumb kids of rich people filling Princeton and Yale and Harvard and middle class kids, hardworking, smart, talented kids who are depending on these loans. Maybe we'll just have to say too bad colleges only for the richies? But I don't think that's going to happen. There are still plenty of loans out there. And if a bank looks at you and says, you know, this is a smart kid, he's going to have a good job and pay this back. The unemployment rate for college grads is just 5%. And there are many far needier people. How about ugly people and short people? They make less. Do we need to <laughs> forgive their loans too? Listen, life is tough all over, no, no, no doubt life about is, it. Life is, and it's less but, tough than it used to be. But, but I think that we ought to be able to find some middle ground here, somewhere between hey, just forgive everybody, kids, too bad, don't pay off your debts, and no matter how responsible you are, no matter how hard you work, too bad, we're never coming for you. We're partly responsible for this. But aren't we responsible for saying, keep your promises? This is a contract? I mean, some of these kids, the loans were so easy, they don't even know 
uh, what they're paying. And at Virginia Tech, they advertise dining hall serves lobster and London broil. At Arizona State, they brag about their 20,000-foot community center with a movie theater and pools.